What is good, YouTube? It is your Benji. We back balling, man. If you're new, please don't forget to subscribe and check out Hoops HQ and multiple social media platforms. The links are down below and on the description. But one of the strangest things went on today, and I'm trying to figure it out right now. Uh, so hopefully, maybe y'all can help me. Because apparently, these two are beefing. Cal Kuzma and Spencer Dinwiddie. Where have y'all been? Did y'all know anything about this in the chat? Let, let me know, bro. Because what? Apparently, this started a while back. I mean, the two have been teammates up in Washington. But and I, I guess it started earlier this season, I guess, after a win where the uh, the Brooklyn Nets. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The um, at the time, Spencer Dinwiddie was on the Dallas Mavericks, and they lost to the uh, Wizards. And he was upset about it because he was saying that them guys don't even play winning basketball. So, <laughs> I mean, I thought I, I do remember this statement, but I kind of think it just kind of you know went over everybody's head, and we just kind of weren't worried about it. But now, since then, the two have kind of rekindled it because. Uh, especially when he went and recently had an interview, I guess, on FanDuel. And we don't listen to it, man. Well, back. Actually, it wasn't even a back and forth. He sort of came at you, and you said they're not trying to play winning basketball. He responds on Twitter. The funny thing is they don't play winning basketball. Honestly, I can't argue with uh, Kuzma because the great Kobe Bryant spoke about having a heliocentric basketball team where you're just worried about one guy scoring all the points and everybody just following suit. Obviously, Kobe Bryant was right because, I mean, he's somebody who has had the experience of somebody who actually played on the team where he was spearheading the offense and everybody was watching him shoot. At the time, Spurs Dinwiddie was on the Mavericks, and, I mean, truthfully speaking, like, I mean, Luka Doncic was scoring all their points, assisting every time. And they were just, it, as long as Luka Doncic went, that's when the team went. So, I mean, it didn't win a game against the Wizards, and it just hasn't uh, led to them getting to the playoffs this year. So, But you didn't do anything else on Twitter. Do you have a response now that it's been some time? Oh, my gosh. How did she stir the pot like this? Did I just say I was petty? Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, please. <laughs> so, here's the thing, right? And obviously, I spent some time in uh, D.C. with uh, with Kuz. Man, what is um, Marcellus Howard got going on? I just said where he said... Uh, <laughs> Insecurity is loud. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, so basically, here's what happened, right? Um, we lost to them. I was on the Mavericks. And obviously, uh, we have a MVP caliber guy, and, and we're trying to be in a uh, championship caliber team. Just went to the Western Conference Finals, et cetera, et cetera. So I make a statement about, you know, we need to be better, um, understanding the, the culture and how games are kind of played in D.C. and saying, you know, that's an unacceptable Yeah, they don't win over there. In that no. fashion. You know, he decides to respond because I guess he felt like it was a shot at him. <laughs> Um, and I wanted to respond. You know, my, my agent told me to stand down that we had Good agent. bigger fish to fry, things to do, um, get to the playoffs, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, now I'm not in that environment. Um, I'm in the playoffs. He's not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to address... <laughs> there it is. Um, no, I'm just saying, to, to address the socialite, right? Like, there's a lot of guys <laughs> in the NBA that really pour their heart and soul into basketball, um, are willing to do whatever it takes to win. There are a lot of guys that have different things that drive them and motivate them. I would like to know the, the what are the, what do y'all think the percentage is of guys who truthfully are putting all, their all into basketball. Now obviously this is all, all of their jobs, right? So they're all at least putting some type of effort into it, but how many of them do you think really care about basketball? You know what I mean? I think cuz I, I like yeah, because it's like it's like for example, if you're working at McDonald's, man, you like some guys might just show up, clock in, and then they gone, right? But then there's the people that you know really come in there. They make sure everything's clean. Let me make sure the dishes are washed, bathrooms are on point, everybody's on the line. You know, I want to make sure I know all the recipes, everything's stocked up. You know, there's a difference, right, between working and guys who really love what they do. If we look at you know, him and the way he approaches um, life, fame, all that stuff, that we can see that, you know, his priorities tend to vary. 
right? Like, that's why. Dressing How can you does, tell he, that, though? You know, approach the basketball the way he does, the comments he makes. Kuzma do be having a um, fits, man. What are we thinking in the chat, bro? Kuzma do be having a fits, but sometimes he don't. Let's see. Kuzma. Oh, shoot. What are we thinking? What are we thinking, y'all? It's a statement made right here. You know, he's making statements. Oh my gosh. Okay, this one's not bad. This is not bad. I like that one. I like this one too. Some of these fits are kind of insane, though. I can't lie. Okay. All right. Oh no. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> nah, this is this is crazy, chat. What are we thinking? And like I said with the Draymond quote, insecurity is loud. Like you you know that you're there, you know, shooting shots to try to get a contract. You're probably not uh even a third star really on a good team. Oh, because wow. if you were, the Lakers would have kept you. Oh right? wow. Part of the reason you left was to try to make more money. Like these are all things that are, are facts. And so at the end of my Jeez. career, one thing that I want to be known besides a guy that did whatever it took to win in whatever spot he was at is a guy that was also very honest. Some of these guys chasing the bag. I think I've had this statement. On, with, I think we watch videos and we've had these statements amongst multiple options of players. Like always the biggest narrative with guys like Damian Lillard, who's one of my favorite players, and he's a Bay Area native. Uh, you're out in Portland. Yes, you want to be loyal. And you can be as loyal as you want to, but you also get in that bag up there, brother. You're getting that bag up there. So the grass is pretty green, no matter what, the way you look at it. So I understand what he's talking about. Because a lot of people just didn't chase that bag. And so, like, my complete response to, you know, coups and all that other stuff, to address it directly, I mean, I played with the guy. You know what I mean? We, we know oh, what that's the priorities true. were. And, you know, a lot of times people thought I was talking about Brad or whatever, anything like that. I, I look at Brad in the same light as, like, a dame. I think he's... Lord of DC, I think, you know, probably on a championship team, he's probably got to be paired with like a Giannis. He's probably 1B, um, which is no shot. I know on a championship team, you know, I'm probably the, the third guy, kind of like a Drew Holiday with a Chris Middleton. And, you know, Giannis. is that true in the chat? Um, I'm very secure with who I am in my career. Um, I know on a really good team, I can be a number two, kind of like we are right here with the Brooklyn Nets. We got Mikael, we got me. We're still a playoff team. We're able to keep the ship right. Um, but in DC, if you got three max dudes, Porzingis, Brad, and Kuz, like, how you missed the playoff? Like, it doesn't, none of these things make sense. You know what I'm saying? Unless your priorities aren't in order. He's got and a so point. I would say that's my probably full monologue to that. Are you Ooh. Ooh. That's, hey, he's kind of, he's kind of spitting that crack right there. He's kind of spitting that. Now we're going to do the, the Twitter deep dive. All right. All right. Oh, he just had his birthday. Okay. Happy right. birthday to him. Uh oh, Kuzma, speaking of Twitter, oh my gosh, this guy did a thread, oh yeah, hey y'all, we, we are here for the content and commentary, alright, talk to me, I just don't like false narratives with me, Kuzma says, people use the way I dress or my celebrity against me, don't let my confidence offend your insecurities, I'm a very driven person, I strive to get better like I have my entire life if you knew my story you'd rock with me more okay since i'm so famous fan don't spend the dignity let me give you all some clout i'm usually unbothered but things said on the internet i will not allow a delusional guy to talk about my teammate tonight here's a thread insecurity is loud question mark the wizards and i have been has so much real real estate on on <laughs> look what this guy said uh this guy got signed by a team 60 M's and was traded before the following season was over. Yikes. What in the world have you won in this league? You've been bounced around like a basketball. Oh, my gosh. You can thank KD and Kyrie for spearheading 34 wins before the All-Star break. 11 for 13 after the break for your playoffs. Oh, my gosh. Second option, working like second point. <laughs> I watched you for two months at the end of your Wizards tenure. Uh, average eight four and four sounds good, but glad you're hooping now. And yep, I got a bag coming. Stop hating. Last but not least, the only way you'll ever be worth your contracts is if the NBA finally gives you your wish of getting paid in crypto. Go Sixers, 
No. Time out. Y'all, please don't tell me the Sixers. They're playing Brooklyn. Hey, you got to love it, bro. You got to love the pettiness. Oh, my gosh. The most random crazy thing, bro. <laughs> Who would have thought this would have been a, a developing story? But, hey, you got to love the pettiness. And when we here, we, t we tapping in on everything that's NBA right now. But, wow. Yeah, uh. Who who do y'all think has a leg to stand on in this uh, debate? And I mean, is best with it to the second option? Is Kuz the second option in DC? I mean, y'all let it be known because I think I mean Kuzma he is uh, up on an early career, and he has been doing his stuff. This hasn't he? I mean, let's I mean let's check the numbers. He hasn't played in a long time. But he was having his best career. And you can see the trend, you know, relatively upward aside from this one year. Actually, these two years. I think that's when uh, LeBron came over where his stats, his numbers kind of dropped and his minutes dropped, you can see. But ever since then, he trended right back up. And we're talking about 21 points a game on 45% shooting. Seven rebounds, three assists. I mean, he's been he's been improving, and you're talking about what six years. It's a long way to go for for uh, Kuz, but of course it would say Spencer wouldn't dim with his stats right up here. Uh, but he's been solid though for a minute as well. So I mean, hey. Who's in the right? Who's in the wrong, man? Y'all let me know, bro. What do y'all think about this? Is this even relevant to a lot of y'all? Do any of y'all know about this? Leave in the comments below. I mean, the two guys are not going to play or anything like that. So, I mean, there's not really anything to even worry about for either team. But it's definitely funny to watch. Stay tuned to the next one.